What's going on everybody? This is Patrick from Mid-10 Outdoors. How's my outdoor crew doing? I hope this video is finding you well. Probably not the opening you were expecting after you see this road scene coming into the video, but I gotta explain some things. <clears throat> now, this video was shot, actually, the main beef of the video was shot two weeks ago, the week of the tornado, the same day as the tornado hit Middle Tennessee. Me and Bill took off and went to South Central Kentucky, Mammoth Cave, Nolan Lake area. Beautiful area. I have lots of pictures. I had lots of video. Didn't make it. Uh, the pictures made it. I've got 35 and digital. They all came out great. Uh, matter of fact, I didn't use this camera and it's the last time I go do a video and don't take this camera with me the last one um, this thing's been a workhorse for a reason because it works every time and 99.9% .9 of the time I'm gonna come home with a video I came home with video on the other camera that I took on the uh, Sony I don't know what happened I I'll, will discuss that on the other channel at some point of what happened, what could have happened, what may have happened. I don't know. Um, but what I do know is a couple times I checked video, it was on there. Got home, it was on there. Went to upload to the computer, it disappeared. So I don't know what I did, what it did, what happened, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's gone. The main beef of the video is gone. Luckily, I had my new to me Canon um, 5D Mark II and I was able to shoot a couple of videos on it um, so I've got that now I've got some footage from the Insta360 in the windshield so we'll have some of that but the rest of this video is probably going to be talking about the pictures and that kind of thing but like I said we went to Mammoth Cave we went to Nolan Lake and Nolan Lake Dam and check that out and we also went and there's zero absolutely maybe two or three pictures from nolan lake state park which is fine i'm going there this next spring to camp i promise you that i love the park it's a neat park there's a lot of stuff near it so we can go do some get some real video this time um it kind of sucks because that was mine and bill's last hoorah for 2023 so anyway I'm going to bring you what I got, and that's all you're going to get, unfortunately. But I also want to say at the end of this, because a week from today, this video comes out. It's Christmas. There may not be a Christmas video, or there may not be a video out for Christmas. Then again, there might be. I don't know yet. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. Um, but I may take the day, the rest of the week off and just enjoy Christmas and I have a video or something I don't know may even come up with a short to drop on Christmas so anyways guys let's get into what I've got okay and um, I'll do like I do on the other channel we'll just talk about the pictures and stuff and throw in some videos that I've got amongst it okay so here's the fish first picture I took at Mammoth Cave National Park Visitor Center uh, which was the sign <laughs> that was the sign uh, this I may have to swap around a little bit I know digitally I didn't shoot anything else at Mammoth Cave um, I will discuss Mammoth Cave a little bit there's a lot more there to do than just the cave there's tons of hiking trails there now I did Mammoth Cave years ago as a kid scouts uh this is some of the uh cabins that are can be found there at um mammoth cave uh, i took a picture of them before i left they look like they're fairly old i i don't know that for sure i mean just looking at the style of them they look like they're a fairly old style cabin um be kind of cool to stay in them i think uh, i'm pretty sure they don't have air conditioner well they may have air conditioner i don't know don't see any air conditioner hanging off of them, but they could. 
I don't know. But I guess they're definitely not heated because they were closed. Um, National Park, they closed a lot of their camping stuff um, for winter, you know, as far as that goes. But anyway, so our next stop was going to be Nolan Lake. Um, really cool area. Like I said, I want to go back there and camp at some point. see real quick i may have some other digital pictures that we can yeah we got some other stuff so nolan lake um and nolan, Re nolan reservoir uh since in central kentucky up and down the town that it's adjacent to um but anyway uh really really cool area me and bill um took off and went there You'll take a look and see, they have got the lake stupid low, kind of like they do Percy Priest here at home um, for winter pool. Uh, it's the thing U.S. Car Army Corps of Engineers does. They do a winter pool every year on their a lot of their major lakes, and you can see right here the how far down the lake really is and where it normally would sit during the summertime. Um, so yeah, they've got it stupid low right now. Um, but it was, I mean, we were talking about it and Bill's pointing out, you know, how low it really is. Um, but it, I mean, you can see how much of a, how drastic it also drops down uh, into the water. So you were, there, there's a sign. I don't think I took a digital picture of it, but there is a sign this says no swimming, but I swear it's pointing back towards the bank, not um, the lake itself. But anyway, um, so we're going to go over to the other side here in just a second uh, to the dam side, to the reservoir side, which you're looking at right here. Let me roll in a video now uh, that I did shoot of this. So you saw that pretty neat little reservoir or a little um, river there, Nolan River. I think it's Nolan River. I'll, I'll put down below what it is. There's Bill standing way over there on the other side um, by the dam. Of course, this being the dam right here. Um, he was standing over there videoing the water coming out. And of course, I was videoing the water right through here. Um, but the 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 this dam is massive on the this side of it the river side of it but it's really a pretty area over here um now all of these pictures were taken with um digital camera here um i was taking a picture of that sign and i'm pretty impressed that when you zoom in you can actually pretty well read what that sign says but anyway so here's some more of the dam we went down further on the river side this is a boat launch it goes into the river um we'll get more into something else here in a few minutes but this is a bluff that sat um, right there beside the river on the river side um i was taking pictures of it using the uh, canon uh, 5d mark ii and Anyway, we won't discuss all that stuff, but um, those pictures, I'm, I'm really impressed with those pictures and how they came out. Uh, let's see, let's scoot on down. We get to, let's see, 
This is more Nolan River. Okay, so this is part of Nolan Lake State Park. It's, I don't know, when I, when I go back to actually camp there, because um, I'm going to start doing some camping in northern or in southern central Kentucky this next year. Because it is, this drive was an hour and 40 minutes at the most. Um, so it's well worth my while to go up there to go camping. Um, but this is just a picnic area in the park. I really, uh, the, the trees lined up the way they are. I was trying to zoom in where you can see how the trees just line up in a row in the, in the, um, picnic area now this is part of the campgrounds itself this is where they would have their boat set up and there i'll show you a picture here in a second but you see how far down the lake is there's the dock sitting on basically the bottom of the lake right now uh, but you see how drastic that lake drops off um, must be a pretty if anybody lives in that area um let me know if you've ever been on that lake very much, fished on it or anything. But I, I kind of got a kick out of the beach clothes sign because right there is the little yellow um, rope that you would not swim beyond if uh, it was swimming season. So it, it's laying on the ground. So yeah, lake's closed. So we left that part and went on. We wanted to go down. We found a road and bill found a ferry what used to be an old ferry and we wanted to go check it out so we did um and that's where this is leading to now uh this is the old ferry road uh where the ferry used to go across right here i've got a picture here in a minute from the other side um but this is the picture of the road now, now let me throw this out there the road up to this point was gravel until about the last, I would say, maybe eighth of a mile at the most, was asphalt. And we kept saying if it did a drastic drop down, then we were probably going to have to abandon going down to it because we were in my two-wheel drive truck. You know, you could have run, it was raining, slickness, may have been hard to get up. But we saw it was asphalt, and we just kept going. I said, you know, if this thing is asphalt all the way down, well, then we'll, we'll just go. But uh, here's part of the rigging that used to be there for the ferry uh, the, on both sides of the ferry launch. And right here, Bill's messing with the, the machinery here, or what's left of the old machinery. Um, you'll see right there, he's reading the uh, brand or the manufacturer of that. But on the way in, we pass something that, you know, if we pass one, we're going to stop. That's all it is to it. We're going to stop. We passed a cemetery. And that's where I started taking these pictures. Now, I do have video from this point using the other camera. And we're going to roll that in real quick, and then we'll be right back. Old cemetery up here. What'd you say, 23 on these? Yeah, yeah. One day, dude. Some of the kids only live one day. Golly, you can't even, dude, there's like no marking left on these. You can't hardly even feel it. <laughs> hey, Corey. These are old, old. <clears throat> January 15th, 1856 to 1911. Look at that little one right there. Yeah, you can't even read them, dude. They're like just so washed away. Yeah.
Hey, look here. This is a Reverend James W. Webb. And then somebody beside it is named. That's it. With a 1868 to 1992 or 22, 22. Well, say, good lord. <clears throat> Little Paul sleeps here. 1908 to 1912. This one's 1853 to 1902. Eliza Jane Self. But look at some of these old, these others that are just. Okay. Here's some right here too. Yeah. That are just rocks. These old cemeteries just yeah. it's crazy. Whoa. Look at them all knocked down over there. 1777 to 1910. Right here. 1777? That's what it says, I think, dude. Maybe <clears throat> 100 something years old. Or 1877. Okay, I was going to say, that got to be over 100 years old. Yeah, it's an eight. Never mind. Okay. Right like, there. Yeah, I'm sorry. WW self. <laughs> I wonder if they even knew who it was. Okay, so hope you liked that. That was just a little bit of video. Sorry for the shakiness because that camera. And that lens does not have any st image stabilization whatsoever. So you get what you get. Now, if any of you are wondering what that says, I imagine there's a few of you out there jumping up and down going, I know exactly what that says. I'm going to read it for you so that if you don't know, you will know. That says, U.S. Department of Interior National Park Service. That's exactly what that means. Um... But anyway, we found this old cemetery. Now, what I thought was really cool and impressive about this cemetery. Now, there was there a lot of, like, the, for instance, the first few graves we found as we walked in. But there was a lot of the graves that were like this one, where they're just, there's nothing left to state who it is or what it is. And you'll look and see, this is a major size little cemetery in the middle of a national park and this is in the middle of a national park uh, by the way the road was four miles long and estimated time from the time we hit it to the ferry site was 20 minutes and it took us 20 minutes to get down that gravel road but anyway you see these ginormous headstones in here monuments we'll get to that here in just a second because there's some coolness to this um but anyway, here's some more of the headstones that are just about completely gone as far as anything written on them. And they're really hard to see. I'll bring that up. The most you can read out of this is, I think that's 1905. Um, let's see if we can even see. It looks like died June 5th, 19. That could be 1915. Um but you see how faded and how, you know, gone the headstones are. Uh, let's see. This one was 1918 to 1918. So this was a child that was born dead. Uh, that happened a lot back then. Unfortunately, it's sad. Um, that, that's just, that's how times have changed. But you see this monument, this monument, this one, and this one. Well, we'll get a little more into it here in a second. Let's see, I've got a couple more. Okay, so this guy, too, was a mason. All these other tall monuments that we were looking at were all masons, particularly this guy. This is John Hutchin. I had to focus in on what it said. But the ferry crossing was Hutchins Crossing. So it was named after this fella. You can see he was a mason. Um, then this is the monument itself. The grave site, the gravestones for him and his wife are back over here to the left of the picture itself. But I really thought these things were very interesting. 
Uh, you can see how ornate this thing is. This old fence wrapping around the gravesite. Just, it's just super cool. Um, we like finding this kind of stuff. This, now this um, was not a mason, but really found out, found that this was a really cool, how this was done, how this was laid out, this gravesite. I'm shaking my hands and pointing and stuff, thinking you can see this, but you really can't. Anyway, so you see the other side of the graveyard. There's my truck sitting way over there. And now the, here it goes, see? But this one was just extraordinarily strange. Um, but you see some of the smaller ones that had the Masonic emblem on them for um, Masons. But all of those big stones that you saw Let's see if I can go back to it. all these big stones right here. And there's one over here on the, or there's one somewhere else over here. They were all Masons. And this was a Mason here too that's laying right here. Um, so I thought it was real interesting that there were so many Masons in this cemetery. Now we did find a list of people buried in this cemetery uh, after doing a little more research. Um, which was really cool to find that list too. Oh, I'm zoomed in way far. Now this one was really is cool too. You see the fellow was April 5th, 1836 to October 25th, 1910. And he was a, he was a Colonel or Company E6 Kentucky Infantry, Confederate States Army. I don't guess it said his rank. But Seth B. Elmore, that was his tombstone. Now, this right here above it is the original tombstone. I dare say part of the Sons of Confederate probably laid this tombstone here um, so you could see it. That looks like something that they would have done. But uh, so we go back across, we go back through and onto the other side of the river where we find the other parts of the ferry. And this is the Hutchinson Ferry. Um, this is some parts that are over there on the other side. This is actually a little park over here for camping. And, um, felt kind of bad for these fellows. There were some people over here camping. They were going to be camping tonight, that night. And those storms were coming in. Now, it may not got as bad up in Kentucky as it did here around the house, but it had to have gotten pretty bad. But, uh, you'll see the river right here coming up now so this is the opposite side so we were over here like two hours ago or an hour ago and we drove all the way around to get to this side now this ferry did not shut down until 2013 because of a failure in a dam at lock six i think is what they said on the sign that released all the water out of the river because the river at one point was up here at this level um, you'll see how far down the river is from the actual roadbed. So you would have had a ferry coming across here. Let's see if it shows a little better here. Yeah, it shows it a little bit better. So now you can kind of see the difference, how much of that water has dropped from that failure. And so they just kind of left it and never brought it back. And they said it was a real hardship for the town because that was the only way they had to get back and forth. And let me tell you something, that road coming back and forth this road up here was a, it was a nightmare well it wasn't a nightmare it was graveled the whole way so you're you're driving fairly slow to get you know down this road to this point and then you got here and it's asphalt and you get over here it's asphalt but it's gravel 99 percent of the way but anyways guys that's let's see i could probably take you over real quick to the 35 millimeter stuff uh pretty much the same affair uh pictures around the lake and everything um i don't think i did any 35 this is the same picture from looking across um to the other side but uh anyway that's it all right guys i hope you enjoyed it i'm sorry that's what it is but that's what it is um like i said i've never i can i've never had outside if i had a gopro but it was a windshield mount go on me on a trip 
but I had the other camera. I had other footage. I had tons of footage, so it didn't really hurt as bad. This one hurt pretty bad because this was my main film camera that I was using that day that just crapped out. So anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate all the support, all the um, subscribers, all of the um, everything that you've done for us this year. We really appreciate it. I promise you to bring you more trips next year. I promise you to bring you a lot more content next year. We've already got a schedule trip in March. So that's happening. We're going to um, TNT Overland is putting on an event at... Um, Russia Mountain State Penitentiary, and we'll be there. Good possibility Bill will be bringing his Jeep, I'll be bringing the truck, and we'll be off-roading that day too. So that may end up being a multi-part video. So we'll see you on the next one. Y'all have a safe holiday. Be prepared.